my name is Jane Tennant and it's an absolute pleasure to welcome you here today to Tennant's Auctioneers and to our preview video of the March Fine Arts Sale which is on the 15th and 16th of March. In this video we're going to take a closer look at some of the lots that are going to appear in the Fine Arts Sale. Hello, my name is Mark Littler from the Silver Department here at Tennant's. My favourite item in the sale is undoubtedly one of the most unique, yet outwardly it appears very normal. Before we examine the hallmarks, it looks almost like every other early 19th century silver fiddle pattern soup ladles. However, this piece was assayed in York. We know this piece would have been a commission from a nobleman from a titled family. We know this as it bears a crest at the top of the spoon as opposed to a set of initials. The fact that it originates from the York Assay Office would normally be enough to set it apart. However, this piece also bears the town mark for York, which is a cruciform surrounded by five lions. And this piece was very seldom used on flatware, so it's a, it's a rare attribute to find on a piece of flatware like this. But the real jewel in the crown for this piece lies with the date letter. It is only the third piece in existence that uses the uppercase letter Q for the year 1827. And it's for these combined reasons that it's going to really elevate it to five to eight hundred pounds as opposed to one to two hundred pounds, which would be the price for a more common ladle from London. Here we have a very rare 17th century lantern clock. As you can see, the, the lantern clock is of typical form with the bell to the top with these side frets which are galleried and also you've got these um, monsters to the top as well, these sea monsters. You can see this is a chapter ring with the Roman numerals and half hour dividers. Also an early feature is a single hand and also in the dial centre you've got it signed by Thomas Chu of Kings Lynn. He was the earliest clockmaker in Norfolk in the 17th century. This is an exciting opportunity to buy a very, very rare clock. This 17th century clock, we are estimating at between four and six thousand pounds. Hello, I'm Charlotte Conboy. Welcome to Tenants. And I work in the picture department here with Alan Darwell. Yeah, welcome to Tenants, everyone. The picture here behind us is a John E. Fernley Senior, um, highly accomplished sporting artist, very important painter, and we're hoping for seventy to ninety thousand pounds. It's of the racehorse Delight, uh, who was a brother to a very important Derby winner, and Chapel is the jockey in his colours. Uh, interesting thing about Fernley is that he was spotted by the Duke of Rutland as being a a very accomplished young painter in his teens and consequently other members of the English aristocracy had their racehorses painted by him. We're absolutely delighted to be presenting this rediscovery early work by JMW Turner. Um, what is so fascinating about it is that through research we understand that this may be what is detailed by Andrew Wilton in his book on JMW Turner as an untraced work of the cliffs at St Vincent Rock, St. St. Vincent Rock in uh, Avon, Bristol. That's right, yes. The auction estimate for uh, this fantastic painting is £15,000-£20,000. What is also quite remarkable and very interesting to note is um, a small typed note on the back uh, which is an excerpt from a long letter from Anne Dart of Bristol, who is recalling the memories of Turner as a youth. Turner's fingerprints are in this picture. He often used to um, use his own saliva uh, on the watercolour and rub with his hands and thumbs, his fingers and thumbs, uh, into the paper. And he's actually left several prints to get the effect. To get the effect on, on, for, in the, so amongst the watercolour. Yeah. yeah. When you say there's the fingerprints of the artist, mm. as you do sometimes, yes. referring to a particular style or technique, yes. it really is yes. the fingerprint of the, the artist. The of the painter, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, my name's Jeremy Patterson, furniture cataloguer and auctioneer. I'd like to show you one of my favourite lots. This wonderful carved mahogany desk, which is the property of a lady, dates from the late 19th century. It is made by the Lancaster-based company Gillows. Just look at the quality of the desk. Serpentine sides, serpentine front, lovely uh, original brass Rococo handles, 
carved detail which include these lovely William Kent uh, figural supports, neoclassical ovals, a real sign of quality. Drawers are interesting, real thick mahogany at the front as well. I just look at the inside of the drawer, uh, mahogany lined as well. Several of the drawers are also stamped gillows and by uh, the numbering system underneath, which is uh, 55949, we actually date this uh, desk to 1878. Another unique feature when identifying Gillow's furniture is this slotted head feature. Although some 19th century furniture makers copied this, in the early 19th century, Gillow's actually invented this to stop the drawers from splitting. So again, a good way of identifying it. In my opinion, a lovely thing from possibly a gentleman's library, uh, centre partner's desk or library desk. Um, good proportions, not too large for the market, and it's got an estimate of 20 to 30,000, so I'm sure it will find a good home. Thanks to our experts for looking in more detail at some of the lots, and we'll look forward to seeing you for the viewing from Sunday the 10th of March until the Friday and Saturday sale.